welcome back to today's video. This is our final kind of little skincare video series here. We're going to talk about nutrition and skincare because it plays such a big role, like more so than most people I think even realize. So we have Ben Fuchs here again today, skincare chemist, nutritionist, pharmacist, all of that. You guys know him by now. So we're just going to kind of jump into it, talk a little bit about nutrition. nutrition. And yeah. You know, do you ever go into the vitamin store and you look at the wall and there's like eight zillion different vitamins and brands and strengths and things you're supposed to take for different conditions? It's like overwhelming. Right? Yeah. So what I do in, when I do my presentations, when I do my talks, is I, like, I, I simplify things. I like, that's one of the things we pharmacists are trained to do. We're trained to take in, in, in taking complex information about medicine, about chemistry, really, mm -hmm. and translating it into our into our human being kind of brains and, and, and uh, educating people about what, how these things work. And that's why if you're like most people, when you have a, a question about herbs or a question about drugs or a question about vitamins or a question about a health challenge, if you're like most people, you're going to go to the pharmacist before you even go to the doctor. And, right. and pharmacists take pride in that. Well, I like to take that whole simplification concept, this idea of simplification and apply it to the concept of nutrition. And the way I simplify nutrition is into what I call this, the eight chapters of good nutrition. Eight chapters of good nutrition are protein, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, water, vitamins, minerals, and then accessory nutrients, trace nutrients. So real quickly, and by the way, I have a long video on what's called the eight chapters of good mm. nutrition. If you just Google. Oh, um, do you? Yeah, yeah. It's like a three hour or two and a half hour talk. Okay. Called the eight chapters of good nutrition. Uh, but to cut to the chase, the skin is made up of protein. Your cells are made up of protein. Your body is made up of protein. Maybe 70%, 60% of your body is protein. Maybe even more is protein. So the number one most important uh, nutritional substance for the body in general, for the skin specific, in specific, is protein. You got to make sure it's quality protein. That's the hardest food to get. It's the hardest food to get at the supermarket. When mm -hmm. I left here, I was hungry. I went to uh, Kroger's to, mm -hmm. to try to find some food. As always, the hardest quality food to find in the supermarket is going to be protein. Mm -hmm. It's the most expensive food to make. So, because we have such a there's such a, a, a powerful role for economics and how we eat and how food is produced, protein tends to be the hardest food to obtain. So you're pretty much stuck with crappy protein, mm -hmm. which is hamburgers and steak and that kind okay. of thing. Okay, right. The best protein is going to be whey protein and egg protein. Now, unfortunately, some people have a problem with whey and some people have a problem with eggs. If that's the case, then you got to go into seed protein, things like hemp seed protein mm -hmm. uh, or nut protein, like Brazil nut protein. Mm -hmm. These are protein supplements that you can use. As far as foods that contain protein, fish is your best protein probably. Eggs are your best protein food uh, or also good protein food. Eggs and fish are probably the two best protein foods. And if you do live fish or live, like sushi, mm -hmm. not live, but close to living, or oysters, which are living, mm -hmm. then you get even more nutritional value, protein nutritional value. Okay. Um, as we now, get, I personally, I do, I'm doing vegan? Like a vegan lifestyle, so I get all my protein from seeds. like, I do, I, yep. I, hemp seeds for yep. vegans, yep. and also uh, uh, Brazil nut protein, any kind of seeds, seeds are going to be your best sources. Right, of and I know there's protein in vegetables, like broccoli. Well, but, like, everything has protein. It, right, everything exactly. has so, protein. Even broccoli has protein. Yeah. yeah broccoli has more protein than most Than a lot, right. Yeah. But even like cucumber is going to have a little bit right, of protein. Right, exactly. So everything's going to have protein because yeah. protein is the, it, pr proteins are the workhorses of life. You know, everything else helps protein work. Fats help protein work, their assistance. Sugar helps protein work, their assistance. But the work is done by the protein. Protein are the workhorses right. of the body. Mm -hmm. So it's on anything that's working, whether it's a, a, a broccoli or a tomato or, or a fish or an animal, is going to have protein in it. And you can have, you can have access to it by eating those kinds of foods. The second important food is especially important for the skin, and that's fats. As we get older, yeah. as we said earlier, you don't, you don't process your fats as effectively, so it's really important to pound fats into the body. And by fats, I'm talking about basically two kinds of fats. You have uh, saturated fats, and you have unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are found in meats. Coconut oil has saturated fats. There's not such a great nutritional need for these saturated fats because your body can make the saturated fats. Unsaturated fats, your body can make some of them, but there's two that the body cannot make, and that's omega-6 and omega-3. Oh, right. right. And they are incredibly important for the skin. And just like uh, you can induce fatty, uh, you can induce acne by removing zinc out of the diet, right. and you can induce dry skin by removing vitamin A out of the diet, you can induce sensitivities of the skin, you can induce rashes in the skin, and you can induce um, dry skin by removing essential fatty acids from the diet. Right. And this is how we know the, about the connection. If you can remove something from the diet and cause these problems, obviously there's a relationship. Right. And essential fatty acids are related to all of those conditions, dry skin conditions, dry skin, sensitive skin, rashy skin. 
So making sure that you're supplementing with your EFAs, especially as you get older, because as we said, when you get older, you don't extract them. So that's going to be your omega threes, your omega sixes, supplement. Omega sixes and omega so threes important. supplement. You can get right. them from foods to a certain extent, but if you're cooking your foods, mm -hmm. which we do, right. you're destroying the essential fats. So even fish, which contains omega threes right. in it, to the degree you cook your fish, you're going to lose the omega threes. Right. So it's such an important supplement. Supp a really important supplement, okay. and I I say this in as a as a researcher and as a nutritionist, but I also say this as a as a therapist because I've seen the most incredible turnarounds in eczema skin and psoriasis skin and dry skin and sensitive skin when people get on an essential fatty really? acid deficiency. Right. Not only that, but if you have an essential fatty acid deficiency, your skin will be more fragile and delicate. You'll be more susceptible to problems with retinol. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways that you can assure that, that you can assure that you can use retinol is to make sure you're on an essential fatty acid supplement and you're extracting really? and absorbing your fats. Yes. Right. So EFA deficiency will make you more more sensitive and more susceptible to problems when you try to stimulate your skin. Oh, so if you want to go to the gym, mm -hmm. like you want to take your skin to the gym, you want to work out, you want to make sure your body has enough wherewithal to be able to handle the workout. And in terms of the skin, essential fatty acids will help your body or help your skin have enough strength and resilience and vitality so that it can use vitamin A. Right, retinol, okay, that's alpha interesting. Acids. Yeah. If you tried to use retin A in the past and you said, oh, I broke out or mm -hmm. I'm sensitive, it really hurt my skin, there's a good chance that you couldn't because you have an EFA deficiency, right. which is very common. Right. All these nutritional deficiencies are very common mm -hmm. because they're not in the food. Mm -hmm. So unless you're supplementing and, and supplementing strategically and correctly, knowing how to supplement, because a lot right. of people will supplement, but it doesn't mean they're getting right. benefit exactly. from it. So if you've tried to supplement in the past and you didn't get any of the benefit that you wanted to get, it's a good possibility you didn't do it strategically or you didn't understand how to how to uh, take advantage of the, of the science of supplementation and the science of supplement combination which okay. is a very important thing to right, understand. Right, okay. So, for example, essential fatty acids, if you don't take them with vitamin E, you might not necessarily get the benefits of the EFAs, and because the EFAs are so volatile and fragile, vitamin E protects your EFAs, you may actually be causing more harm than good. So you always so, want to make sure you now, put E and, a to get so e and e, EFAs together. Really? Now, that's, is that usually combined in one supplement? Or smart they, companies will put them in combine. one supplement. If but, not, though, but then... So that's sure what you're looking for. Absolutely. Vitamin E... Uh, well, we'll talk about vitamin E here in a second. The third uh, is sugar, mm -hmm. and there's two kinds of sugar. There's the good sugar and there's the bad sugar. The bad sugar is the straight sugar that's extracted from the sugar plant that goes into all our food. The good sugar is tied in with fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and, and foods, and uh, also comes in short short versions, called gluc mostly called glucose and fructose, and then longer versions, which are incredibly helpful for your skin. So your short sugars, you gotta be really careful with, especially if they're refined. Mm -hmm. You can be less careful with them. You still have to be careful with them if they're fruits and vegetables, but your long sugars, yeah. those are incredibly important for your skin because they absorb water. What's the long? Algaes. Oh, okay. They're found in algaes and they're found in any foods that swell, um, gelatin or, um, or uh, um, uh, what's a good food? Uh, slippery elm or herbal material. Any food that you put water into and it swells, mm -hmm. it's swelling because of the sugars. Mm -hmm. They're called polysaccharides, mm -hmm. is the technical term. And these polysaccharides, like they swell when they contact water, they will swell in your skin, uh, in, they'll be in your blood and they'll get deposited in your skin and they'll have a swelling effect where they will help your body trap water. Ah. So polysaccharides, long chain sugars right. that are found in algaes, in vegetables, uh, in fruits, in uh, uh, gelatin or collagen. If you eat collagen, yeah, uh, all of these kinds of food, all of these kinds of foods contain these long chain sugars that can help more, uh, give your skin a plumper look, right. and help your skin trap water. Okay. So those are good sugars. So you have your right. three types of sugars essentially. You have your short refined sugars that are found in processed foods. Stay away from those. Right. Stay they damage your skin. Yeah. Big time damage yeah. your skin because they destroy connective tissue. Yeah. Uh, the second kind of sugars are your short chain sugars that are found in fruits and vegetables, you know, like if you have an apple or if you have a banana, they're, yeah. they're not quite as bad uh, because they're trapped in with other nutrients and nature has given, uh, nature's so beautiful, it puts zinc in with the sugar, it puts mm -hmm. magnesium in with the sugar, it puts chromium and niacin in with the sugar to help your body use it. So they're not as bad. And then there's the sh third sugars, which are the long chain sugars that are found in fruits and vegetables and algaes. Uh, and also, uh, I like slippery elm and, uh, and various herbal material it has these mm -hmm. long chain sugars. Herbs are just vegetables, of course. Right. Uh, and those those long chain sugars can have good skin benefits. Right. Fiber cleans your intestine. That's the fourth chapter of the good, of good nutrition in the handbook of good nutrition. I call it. Yeah. Cleans everything out. Cleans the estrogen out. Cleans the waste out. Incredibly important. So important. And most people, I feel like 
don't have, they don't get enough fiber. Yeah. Hardly anybody. Yeah. You know, constipation is an epidemic, and that's yeah. a classic sign of not having a, a poor fiber right. intake. Because fiber is not found in meat, and it's not found in processed food. And that's right. What a that's lot what, of us are ingesting exactly. in processed food. And then there's water. Water is interesting, but it's misunderstood because just drinking water isn't going to help your dry skin, mm -hmm. and just drinking water isn't going to plump your skin up mm -hmm. because remember, the water has to be trapped in the connective tissue. Right. So you got to be building connective tissue. So, but water still is important because your body is 60, 70% water. Water helps you digest your food, by the way. Mm -hmm. Water helps dilute your blood. So you get more blood flow to your brain, more blood flow to your skin. Really, really important. Right. Drink clean water, though. Right. Not tap water. Right. And then the last two chapters, of, uh, last three chapters of good nutrition are the trace nutrients. And those are nutrients you need small amounts of. In fact, the trace nutrients, the vitamins and the minerals and the accessory nutrients, uh, those are really interesting, especially the vitamins and the minerals, because those don't have calories in them. And their job is to help your body use the calories that you get from your proteins and your fats and your mm -hmm. carbohydrates. So in nature, the micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals, are always found with the proteins and the fats and the carbohydrates. Nature being brilliant, you know, brilliantly, divinely inspired and intelligent, knows that if you have a food that has X amount of protein and fats and carbohydrates, you're going to need X amount of micronutrients to help right. your body use those calories. But what have we done in the last 150 years? We figured out a way to take the macronutrients, the proteins and the fats and, and, and carbohydrates, and remove them from the micronutrients. Uh -huh. So we're all eating these calorie-rich foods with without, no, without right. the nutrients we need to handle the calories. So we get plenty of calories, but we don't get the nutrients that we need to handle the calories. Mm -hmm. The body doesn't know what to do with all these calories, and calories are... You know, calor means heat, right? Yep. So calories represent heat. Yep. So you eat your calories without the micronutrients to help your body use the calories. Now the body has all this heat. The body goes, ah, heat. Right. You know, it's like a fire. So the body has a fire department and it has a way of putting out the fire. You know what we call the way the body puts out the fire from too many calories and not right. enough micronutrients? We call it our fat butts. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. what we call it. Right. And that's what our body fat is, is all of this calories that we're ingesting right. without the micronutrients. Right. So the micronutrients are key for helping the body use the macronutrients. So key that if you get calories without micronutrients, you won't not, you'll not only get fat, but you won't be strong. Mm -hmm. You won't be vital. You, it's like you'll be obese, but you'll be sick. Yeah. You, it's like we're starving, but we're still obese right. because we're not getting the micronutrients. Right. On the other hand, once you start using the micronutrients, you'll be able to eat less calories and get more energy which is why people lose weight when they start a micronutrient program. Oh when they get God. on vitamins and right. minerals, they notice they're not as hungry all the time. Well, it's funny that you said that since I actually um, kind of made the change and do vegan you're not diet as hungry. now. I, I'm so, I eat a ton of vegetables, but I, it keeps me so full. Yes, you're not. Yeah. because your body's getting the nutrients it needs to process the calories. It's so interesting. So micro, you could go eat a McDonald's burger and fill up. And still not be hungry. And still be, and still be hungry. Still be hungry. Right. Exactly. It's like uh, after Thanksgiving dinner. Right. You know, yeah. you eat, you're full. You're so, An hour later, you're, you're hungry. In the, yeah. Because you got the calories, but you didn't get the nutrients to help your body use the calories. Right. All those calories get stored in you as body fat, and then you're hungry again. Exactly. And then right. you go back and eat. Which is why a micronutrient supplement program, in my opinion, is not optional. Right. It's something everybody needs to do, but you've right. got to understand how to do it strategically. And that's what I do. I that's one of my jobs is to educate people on my radio show and mm -hmm. presentations and on these videos and YouTubes is to educate people on how to use micronutrients to take advantage of their ability to help your body use right. the macronutrients. So you have two kinds of two categories of micronutrients. You have your vitamins and minerals. They're different. Um, there's two kinds of vitamins. There's your fatty vitamins and your water vitamins. Your fatty vitamins are uber important for the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fatty vitamins you can remember by the name DEEK or the acronym DEEK, mm -hmm. D-E-A-K. Those okay. are your fatty vitamins. Yep. E is extra important for cigarette smokers or anybody who's out in the sun a lot or is doing anything that toxifies the skin yeah. because E is very protective for the skin. Vitamin K is important for blood clotting. So if you mm -hmm. find you're bruising a lot, right. or you find you have, you have those, those circles under the right. eyes, that could be a vitamin K issue. Vitamin K is great to use pre-surgery and post-surgery to mitigate bruising. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you do bruise yourself, if you take, take a fall or, some, you know, or you have some kind of purpling condition, vitamin K can help heal right. topically sometimes as well as internally, right. but mostly mostly internally. Uh, and then vitamin A and D, which are the most, A especially, but A and D kind of work together. The most important building vitamins. 
and, and having beautiful, healthy skin is in large part a function of how well your body is building. Because mm -hmm. skin is always, is always growing, it's dynamic. So vitamin A and D are what we say in the business are anabolic. Have you heard? Right. You heard the term yeah. like anabolic steroids, right. right? Anabolic means building and vitamin A and vitamin D are anabolic. Okay. So vitamin A and D are critical building vitamins and extra important for the skin. As we said earlier, if you remove a, a vitamin A from the diet in animals or in people, mm -hmm. you, like if you take Accutane, you get really dry right. skin. Uh, and then there's the water-soluble vitamins. Those are more for energy. They're quick-acting. The fat-soluble vitamins are more for long-term. Uh, but the quick-acting, energizing vitamins are the B-complex and vitamin C. And vitamin C is, if I had to pick one vitamin for the skin, yeah. or one vitamin for anything, right. it would be vitamin C. Vitamin C. It's for, for every single system in the body. And because we, it's water-soluble, we urinate both of those out. Mm -hmm. And when you urinate out your uh, vitamin B and vitamin C, it's very difficult to become, it's very easy to become deficient. Mm -hmm. So many people are deficient, especially first thing in the morning, even if they supplement with vitamin B and C, oh, really? especially if you're drinking a lot of water, right. because you lose them in your urine. Uh huh. So it's important to take those throughout the day. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not enough to take the B complex and vitamin C just once a day. I like people to put a nutritional powder or vitamin C powder or B complex mm -hmm. powder in water and just sip on it. Really? Yeah. Right. I'll sip on it all day. So you long. should be taking doing that a little bit. Yeah, all day. A little, little bit all day long. Right. And then there's the minerals, and the minerals also come into diff in different classes. The most important of the minerals are probably the most uh, functional of the minerals. They're all important, but the most functional of the minerals are what we call electrolytes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Electrolytes are minerals that dissolve in water. And when these electrolytes dissolve in water, they do something very interesting. They become electrical. So you have minerals that are highly electrically charged when they're in a fluid system. Mag right. In particular, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium. These are energizing substances because we're electrical beings. So making sure you do these electrolytes on a daily basis, but even on a regular basis because they're water soluble, so you urinate them out. Mm -hmm. So just like you, you can become deficient in the B complex and vitamin C, very easily, particularly if you're drinking a lot of water, it's very easy, unfortunately, to become deficient right. in these electrifying right. minerals, the electrolytes. Again, that's why you see all these waters nowadays. That's why they have like the electro Exactly. Yeah. They don't give you anywhere near the electrolytes right. you need, but that's the concept. Right. Best way to get electrolytes is from vegetables and veggie juices. Okay, and There's right. also nutritional powders that you can do that, ha that have electrolytes in them as well. Right. But, uh, 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 veggies and fruit juices, fruit juices have a little too much sugar, so you gotta be careful. So right. I like veggie juices right. um, for electrolytes. Also, uh, aloe vera is a good source of electrolytes. Right. You know, eggs are a great source of electrolytes. Uh, other minerals that are very important, probably my favorite mineral is zinc, and that's important because for the skin because it's actually stored in the skin. Right. When you cut yourself, the zinc is mobilized to the area to heal the cut. Mm -hmm. Zinc is part of your uh, collagen making machinery. It's part of the DNA. So it right, we like, talked about a lot, the zinc deficiency and zinc acne issues. Tremendously and... valuable for the skin, but also it helps you process sugar. It's important yeah. for wound healing or for uh, sore throats. It's important for the immune system for colds. Yeah. In fact, there's a pharmacist, very smart guy, who knew this. We learned this in pharmacy school about zinc and the immune system. And this pharmacist. Uh, really brilliant guy. He actually invented an intranasal spray that you see advertised all the time, and he mm -hmm. said shortens cold duration. But, oh yeah, but he's right. It right. does. But so does zinc. It does it because of zinc. You don't yeah. need this special product. You just need zinc. That's okay. what, that's what zinc does. Uh, magnesium is also important, especially for women, because women lose magnesium in their blood every month when they have their menstrual cycle mm -hmm. or when they have periods. So. Uh, magnesium deficiency is really uh, is the second or even the first most common along with zinc oh, nutritional really? deficiency. Between yeah. zinc and magnesium, you have your two most common uh, magnesium deficiency problems. And it's ironic, or, or uh, nutritional deficiency problems, but it's ironic because magnesium is so abundant. Everywhere you see green, you have magnesium. Right. Magnesium is what makes your plants green. Right. So any green vegetable, or any vegetable really, or anything that has chlorophyll in it, because uh -huh. magnesium is part of the chlorophyll molecule, is going to have magnesium. So if we eat our vegetables, we should get plenty of magnesium. Right. But of course, we don't really eat our vegetables. A lot of people, yeah. So we become, we, okay. magnesium deficiency is, is somewhat common. And then, you know, there's, you know, there's 80 minerals, so you can talk about a lot of them. But just in the interest of brevity, I'll tell you about my last favorite mineral, so underappreciated, and that's silicon. Mm -hmm. Silicon is critical for precipitation of tissue, a hardening of tissue. So collagen, whether it's in your bones or whether it's in your skin, it's our favorite molecule, obviously, in the skincare world. Right. 
you can't make it without silicon, and silicon deficiency is also somewhat common. So, okay. so uh, eating vegetables to get silicon, you can get silicon uh, silica. They call it liquid silica mm -hmm. gel, which contains the element silicon. Yeah. Um, liquid silica gel, horse tail, uh, all plants, and all fruits and vegetables will, yeah. will get silica. But I like right. liquid silica gel okay. as a good source of this of the element silicon. Really? Okay. Last chapter on the Handbook of Good Nutrition: Accessory Nutrients, Probiotics. Oh yes, we have to talk about that. Those are yes. so important. Yeah. If you know, I remember. When I first heard about probiotics in pharmacy school, I started using them on my patients when I, when I was a pharmacist, and it was unbelievable the kinds of results people would get when right. they got on a probiotic right. supplement. But you got to be a little careful because there's so many probiotic brands out there, and you got to find a brand that works for you. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to respond differently to certain brands. Yeah. You want to look for multiple strains of bacteria. You know, uh, uh, probiotics come in billion billion units. Mm -hmm. you get one billion unit, two billion units, ten billion units, fifteen billion units. You want to look for enough billion units, and you also want to look for um, a, a wide variety of bacteria, right. a wide variety of strains, of strains, yeah. of strains in your right. bacteria. Also, fermented food is a good source of bacteria. Right. Um, miso, tempeh, um, sauerkraut, kimchi. There's a wonderful book called The Art of Fermentation. Mm -hmm. it has all these wonderful recipes for making your own fermented food. I mean, fermented yeah. food is the easiest thing to make. You basically, is that? I never made it. I you basically just chop up your vegetables yeah. and put some bacteria in and let them let really? them go, let them rip. Yeah. Cover them up a little bit, you yeah. know, and the bacteria do the work. Ah. And the bacteria not only proliferate, yeah. so that when you eat them, you help your bacteria, but they also make enzymes, they also make acid, they also make it easier for your body to extract nutrients from other foods. It do some tremendous things. Mm -hmm. These probiotics. Probiotics, you know, probiotic issues are the root of everything, root of all disease. We talk about digestive Digestion. system. We said the digestive system is the root of disease. Well, the root of digestive dis disease is the probiotics. Right. And because we're born from moms, one of the ways that the probiotics are supposed to populate the gut is when we're born, we're supposed to come out, and as we come out of the uh, the, the birth canal, we're bathed in bacteria. Mm -hmm. Did you have did you had your babies ready? No, no, cesarean. Not cesarean okay. for both, so right. when you're cesarean, yep. you don't they don't that. get that. Right. They don't get that. And 33% of babies are born cesarean. Right. So... And and people my age, I'm in my fifties. People my age, even more. They mm -hmm. used to use cesareans even more. Yep. Or if mom wasn't healthy, right? And mom didn't have the right bacteria, right? So many babies come out of the womb without these bacteria bathing them, or at least the wrong kind of bacteria bathing them, so they don't get this influx of bacteria through the nose and through the mouth, right? And so they they become compromised from day one, right? And so if then if you you get colicky or you get formula, if you get breast. My one son had acid reflux when he was a baby. It's a classic sign of yeah. bacterial issue. Issues. Yeah. So for babies like that, definitely get them on a bacterial supplement. Right. They make infant bacterial supplements. But as we get older, replacing those bacteria with fermented food and pro probiotic supplements becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Fiber is a very important interaction between fiber and probiotics. Probiotics actually help us digest fiber and get nutrients from fiber and digest veggies and get nutrients from veggies as well. So right. there's an interaction that probiotics play with the entire digestive system. Well, I feel like with, when I started my probiotic, I feel like your whole inside just feels cleaner and feels... And bowel movements. Boom. Right. <laughs> you just feel clean. You gotta, you yeah. gotta have it. You want to be cleaning yeah. out yeah. the whole thing. And yeah. probi you know, eight, I, I don't know if you want to say this, but a large percentage of a stool is probiotics, is bacteria. Uh -huh. Like 60, 70% of your, back, of your, uh -huh. of your you know, stool right. is bacteria. So if you have a, probi uh, a deficiency in probiotics, right. it can be a classic case of constant classic cause of constipation. Right. So probiotics are incredibly, Huge. incredibly important. And we talked about estrogen earlier, mm -hmm. about that, about how estrogen breaks down into toxic metabolites. Right. Probiotics help you clear out estrogen and help you process uh, estrogen. Okay, right. So many estrogen problems, like breast cancer can be an estrogen problem, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, you ever hear this? PCOS yeah, yeah. can be an estrogen problem. Um, uh, all kinds of reproductive health issues can be estrogen problems. They can be caused not by necessarily by estrogen itself, but by deficiencies in probiotics that are causing a disruption in how you clear out and process right. the estrogen. So, so getting everyone out, should be on a probiotic. Everyone should be on a I probiotic. I have my kids on them now, everyone. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Digestive enzymes are another accessory nutrient. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite, I know there's a million we could talk about, but I'll just say my last one, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite, is something called N-acetylcysteine. Have you heard of this? No. NAC? No. NAC, NAC for short, or N-acetylcysteine long, for long, is incredible for the liver. In fact, it's so important for the liver that if you were to have liver toxicity and get put into a, a wheeled into an emergency room on a gurney, mm -hmm. they would go to the cabinet and get this stuff, NAC, oh, really? and put it right in your blood really? to clear out your liver right. from Tylenol poisoning or from drug poisoning from the liver. NAC is used to treat cystic fibrosis. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing supplement. 
but you could buy it in as medicinal as it is. It's the same stuff that you buy in the health food store. Right. So you can detox your liver incredibly with really? NAC. It's a great well, it's acne called product. NAC. NAC. Uh -huh. NAC, NAC, or technically N dash acetyl cysteine. But if you just say NAC, right. or you just Google NAC. We'll finish up talking just a little bit about like people who have the skincare concerns of the rosacea, yeah. the acne. Let's, why, don't you just, why don't you just name an illness and I'll give you a protocol? Like, okay, so it's, someone. It's a so someone with rosacea. Someone with rosacea. Um, First and foremost, uh, this is just, this should be for all skin issues. Yeah. Uh, fast for one or two days, even three if you can, mm -hmm. and then do a food diary. When you do your food diary, eat one kind of food and see how you respond. Try not to have a big complex meal that has twenty different working yeah. parts to it. Just have eggs. Just have potatoes. Just have rice. So do you kind of you, you kind of want to eat like the specific like the like because there's certain foods that cause issues. Pick with your majority. favorite food. Right. Pick your favorite. Start with your favorite food because it's usually going to be your favorite food. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so pick your favorite. If you like yeah. ice cream, eat yeah. ice cream all day. Right. If you like French fries, eat French fries all day. And see what and happens. Then watch what happens. And almost always. 99.999% of the time, your favorite food is going to be causing a problem. Mm -hmm. You're going to notice that there's an issue. It's I, I so, have yet to hear what is, Why is that? Is it because your body is kind of... Because you crave. Right. Because what happens is when you eat a food that's problematic, you get a surge in cortisol mm -hmm. and a surge in a hormonal system that makes you happy. Because when the body's under stress, believe it or not, it, in, for the short term, it gets happy. Mm -hmm. Because this is an adaptive mechanism that will allow you to have the wherewithal to get away from whatever that problem was. The problem is, is that you get addi we get addicted to foods that spike our cortisol. Okay. And so our favorite foods, if they're spiking our cortisol and causing a stress, uh, cause a stress response, will be foods that we become addicted to. Right. So unfortunately, the problems there's a relationship between addictive foods, our favorite foods, and foods that cause a problem. Right. And that's okay. just an unfortunate thing. But we right. find that as your body is stronger, you don't get that same stress response from a food that you used to get. So right. you'll be able to eat a little bit of your favorite food. Okay. Right. Even though it's not necessarily good for you, you won't necessarily have that problem once you clean your yourself out. Work with this list, you know, for the next three, four, five days. If you want to stop, if you're satisfied with just knowing two pieces of information, then start eating normally. If you're, if you're not getting hundred percent results, do it again. Kind of clean out your diet. Yeah. Uh, while you're doing that, then you can start supplementing with, uh, with uh, nutritional supplements for the digestive system. Right. Probiotics, probiotics. Are obviously important. Apple cider vinegar with your meals. So that's, what, uh, that's what you had me start doing and apple I love vinegar. it now. It's, apple yeah. cider vinegar with your meals can be very helpful. Yeah. Apple cider vinegar with your enzymes. Take digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar together. The really? enzyme will yep. help the apple cider vinegar activates the enzymes. So make ah. sure you get on digestive enzymes. Right. Anything with gelatin can, if you're you know not a vegan or vegetarian, mm -hmm. can help soothe the digestive system. Mm -hmm. If you are a vegan, excuse me, or a uh, vegetarian, use algae that can help soothe the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Here's another interesting one. Anything that um, that builds connective tissue. That mm -hmm. you can use to treat arthritis. Right. Like, what's the classic drug they used to treat, or supplement they used to treat I arthritis? I have no idea. Glucosamine. Oh, right? okay, yeah, I've heard of that, yeah. Awesome for the stomach, or for right. the digestive system, okay. because it helps build a strong intestinal lining, and awesome for the skin, because it helps build connective so tissue. So, rosacea, skin. rosacea, a huge digestion issue. If you have rosacea, it's yes. a digestion no, not issue. Huge, all. All, all. yeah. All. Uh, and then, you know what though, if we talk about individual diseases, we'll probably say the same thing. Yeah. There's a few other things, like, for example, psori uh, psoriasis. When your skin, you know, psoriasis, we get these plaques right. forming on the surface of the skin. Right. Classic food allergy. Uh, but also, it's, uh, fats are very important for psoriasis sufferers. Right. And also eczema. Eczema is like reverse psoriasis. Right. Psoriasis is when skin cells are growing too fast. Psoriasis cells is when uh, cells are not growing fast right. enough. So you get these patches. Mm -hmm. kind like of flaky. Yeah, well, you can kind of see the dermis. Or yeah. Not the lower epidermis. You can kind of see through. Right. It's like it doesn't, the skin cells don't develop fast enough or don't develop, develop uh, normal enough. Normal. Okay. Remember, it's a, it's a normalization kind of process and they're not developing normally. Right. All of this has to do with inflammation in the immune system, both psoriasis and eczema. So again, food diary, fasting food diary, eat a food, see how you feel. Right. Mostly though, the five main allergens are going to be um, dairy, eggs, peanuts, soy, and maybe seafood. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the big food allergies, peanuts, legumes of all kinds, uh, eggs, and dairy are the big ones, and grains, of course, uh -huh. grains. Grains are a big problem, actually. Right. And all seeds really can be a problem, but grains in particular are problematic, especially processed right. grains. Right. So grains, uh, legumes, 
dairy and eggs. So those are your those big, are the main. Those are your main ones. Uh huh. Um, but you can, like we were saying, you could be allergic. To, you can have a reaction. I don't want to say allergic, but you can have reactions to tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Or you can have reactions. Or it causes to like an inflammatory response. Causes an inflammatory response. Your response. Your Absolutely. Right. So you be the task. Right. Psoriasis and eczema are especially. Uh, uh, especially involve the fatty system of the body. So, and there's some interesting reasons, I don't want to get into them, but it has to do with how this, the cell membrane, the covering of the cell, which is fatty. So essential fatty acids tend to be really important for psoriasis and eczema. Vitamin A and D mm-hmm. are very important for psoriasis and eczema. The mineral zinc and selenium are very mm-hmm. important for psoriasis and eczema. Psoriasis and eczema, you can reduce the appearance of and you can speed the healing of using these nutrients topically. You're not going to right. eliminate the problem right. topically, but you can support the healing, especially vitamin D. You know, if you go to the dermatologist, they'll actually put a sun lamp on you if you have mm-hmm. psoriasis. Right. So vitamin D plays a very important role in both psoriasis and eczema. Uh, acne is a really unfortunate one. Nobody should ever have acne. Right. And, and you know, at, at the age most people have acne, they're so psychologically vulnerable that you can like... Uh, when you're a teenager or... You can like have your right. whole life destroyed. Right. You know, it's such a tragically unnecessary... So now why is that a time in people's lives? That, is it, because is it, acne... Is the, it's a hormone thing, right? Well, acne is a very... Uh, a, a, dynamic, it's a very active disease state. Mm -hmm. The body's moving very, very fast. And when the body is moving very, very fast and cells are developing really, really fast and things are active, when you spike activity from other sources, you're going to max out activity on the skin. And because puberty is such an active uh, active time hormonally, specifically in the active hormone testosterone, which is really the, the bad guy from a hormonal standpoint, that's the bad guy. Uh, when it comes to acne, you can really, you're going to rev up the system. Uh-huh. And that's exactly, that's basically what acne is. It's a revved up skin system, a yeah. hyperactive skin system. It's a hyper proliferative condition. Because it's funny because I hear people say, oh, I, you know, I had acne as a kid. Now I'm an adult. I didn't think I'd ever have acne again. But then as you get you have older, to take care of the hormones. then it's, it's back to a hormone. You have to take care of the hormones. Right. But the hormones themselves are secondary to the diet. Mm-hmm. So your main two hormones that are involved in acne are testosterone and insulin. And mm-hmm. they're both very related. They're both building hormones. So working with, to work with acne effectively, you got to number one, work with insulin. And the easiest way to do that is to lay off the sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's why when dermatologists, they don't say as much anymore, but they used to say, oh, chocolate doesn't cause acne. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. It it definitely does because chocolate has sugar in it and sugar spikes up your insulin and insulin revs the system up. Insulin will spike cortisol. So it'll make your skin oily and that compounds the problem. Testosterone does the same thing. So the way you work with insulin is... You eliminate foods that spike your insulin, and that's the sugary foods and the breads and the pastas and the cereals and the foods we all love. Yeah. And then also help your body use insulin. And the way way you help your body use insulin or potentize or strengthen insulin is with chromium, vanadium, magnesium, the B-complex, niacin. There's a lot of nutrients, arginine, taurine. There's a lot of nutrients you can use to help the body process insulin. And these are all going to be things that you should use if you have acne. Right. From the insulin standpoint. Then there's nutrients that help your body process testosterone, most important way which is zinc. And this is what so makes back to the zinc again. This is what right. makes zinc so important for treating acne right. because it helps your body process testosterone. Mm-hmm. It also is important for wound healing and for sugar metabolism and other things, but its main role or it's probably one of its main roles in handling helping your body handle acne is by helping the body process testosterone. Okay. Then uh also, for acne, there's other accessories. Wait, what, what's the zinc that we should be looking for to supplement? Zinc picolinate. P I C O L I N A T E. Picolinate. Okay. So that's what you need to look for to supplement. Yes, okay. 50 milligrams. There's another one. Mm-hmm. It's a little more expensive, but it's good called zinc monomethionine. Mm-hmm. Is that still 50 milligrams? Uh, yeah, still zinc. 50 milligrams. Yeah. So back to acne, um, sugar, uh, also fats, making sure that your body's processing fats correctly, so using digestive enzymes. Um, especially an enzyme called pancreatin, which helps your body process fats. Okay. That's a pancreatic enzyme. Right. Probiotics are going to be very important. Anything that helps you with digestive health is going to be very important. Fiber can be helpful. Uh, I love NAC and acetylcysteine because it clears out the liver, and the liver is important for right. hormone processing. So uh, NAC is very, can be helpful for acne. Selenium can also be very helpful for acne because that, that's very important for liver detoxification. In fact, okay. anything you can do to help detoxify Detox, the liver right. is going to be important for dealing with acne. Okay. Acne should resolve itself. If you do everything correctly, acne should resolve itself in less than four weeks. Really? If you have the worst case of acne today, right. you should have your acne begin to disappear within four, four to six weeks 
dramatically. I mean, it should instantly start to disappear, but dramatically within four to six weeks. It may take up to six months for everything to heal mm -hmm. and for everything to straighten out. But once you do this correctly, if you're dealing with acne, it can be gone in four to six four weeks. weeks. Yeah. Or, or at least dramatic, the process can dramatically begin. Big, like within huge four results. To six weeks. Huge that. results within right. four to six weeks. Right. Absolutely. If you're well, not, you just need to tweak the program. Mm -hmm. It's not, nobody needs to be condemned to acne. Right. And really nobody needs to be condemned to any of these different right. states. Because, because it's all, like you said, it's all it's coming out. It's a response. It's so a we response. need to read that response and yeah. figure out what's going on. Exactly. So that's it for today for our little nutrition kind of talk here. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a little something. Again, Ben Fuchs here. Now you have a YouTube channel too. I don't know if I you have a YouTube up channel. With it anymore. I have lots of videos. If you Google pharmacist, I was going to say, I will link his channel down below because I actually watched some of your videos and there's a lot of just helpful info about nutrition and digestion and all right. that stuff. And so. I have a radio program I do every day called The Bright Side. Yeah. Where we talk about these ideas every day, mostly nutritional because I am, I, I, that's my main metaphor for the, for healing the body or working with the body mm -hmm. is nutrition. So the Bright Right side, we talk about nutrition, and then I have I do presentations around the country. I'm going to be in Sacramento in a couple weeks doing some. Yeah, so I will link all of his info down below for you guys too. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. Bye.